Welcome to this video about failure mode and effect analysis, sometimes shortened to be FMEA. Let's firstly look at the context of FMEA within the framework of the automotive standard IETF 16949. As many of you will know, that standard is based upon a plan, do, check, act approach. Within IETF 16949, we see the word FMEA used 26 times. And obviously many of you will be aware that the FMEA should link to the control plan. And in IETF, we see the word control plan used 50 times. The International Automotive Task Force have developed IETF 16949 with the goal of providing for continual improvement, emphasizing defect prevention, and the reduction in variation and waste in the supply chain. And FMEA is a great tool to help an organization meet this goal. As well as understanding IETF 16949, we also need to keep up to date with any sanctioned interpretations or frequently asked questions. Remember that an IETF sanctioned interpretation changes a requirement. Where a frequently asked question gives guidance against the requirement, but it doesn't change it. So if we're involved in the automotive certification scheme, we need to keep up to date with any changes. We can do that on the ATF Global Oversight website. As well as understanding the requirements in IETF 16949 related to FMEA and any relevant sanctioned interpretations, we also need to understand customer specific requirements. So if we look at the definition in IETF, a customer specific requirements are interpretations of or supplemental to IETF 16949. And within the requirements of IETF, 4.3.2 requires customer specific requirements shall be evaluated and included in the scope of the organization's quality management system. And along the bottom of the screen, you can see some examples of customer specific requirements. We also need to be able to make reference to Annex B in IETF 16949. This is where we see a list of globally recognized best practice tools and reference manuals. So the customer will often mandate some of the documents that are re related on Annex B. One of the things that might be influenced by customer specific requirements is the format that we use for FMEA and the scoring criteria. So what you can see on the screen here are two different example formats. The one on the bottom may be the one that you are most familiar with. This is taken as one of the format examples in the AIAG 4th edition reference manual. The format on the top is from the new AIAG VDA reference handbook. So in understanding which format to use, we need to refer to customer specific requirements. If there are no requirements, then the organization can decide which reference manual do we use and which template format do we use. Most of you will already be familiar with there are two different types of FMEA that are referenced in IETF 16949. A product or design FMEA, this would be applicable to organizations that have product design responsibility. And then we come down to process FMEA that is applicable to all organizations that either want to achieve or maintain certification to IETF 16949. One thing that we have to consider is that any of these core tools like FMEA do not work as a standalone. We have to make sure that all the linkages are together. So for example, we need to take the output from the design FMEA and decide through the process flow, how are we gonna make the product? But also the design FMEA 
can provide an input into developing the process FMEA. The process FMEA output needs to provide an input into the control plan, which will link to measurement system analysis, statistical process control, and link to the relevant standardized work or work instructions. And we need to keep all these linkages up to date if we make changes to the product or changes to the process. And we also need to consider special characteristics in this whole chain. So what about effectiveness of use of FMEA up to now? FMEA as a technique has been used for a long time within the automotive supply chain. But in 2017, 64 million cars were recalled from the road because of some form of problem or potential problem. So let's ask ourselves the question, why up until now has FMEA not been effective to prevent recalls or field failures? My view is that often there is not commitment from management within an organization to provide the relevant resources. So FMEA often gets done by one person, even though there are a number of names within the FMEA template. We have to change this thinking if we're going to make FMEA effective in the future. So now let's take a look at one significant change in the field of FMEA, which is the issue of the new AIG VDA FMEA handbook, first edition. To produce this handbook took three years of collaboration. And this was made up of a working group of vehicle manufacturers and organizations at different levels in the automotive supply chain. So what are some of the focuses in this new handbook? So there's increased emphasis in making sure that FMEA is implemented effectively and that's the link between FMEA and the cost of poor quality. Because what we should be doing is identifying sources of potential failures and then taking proactive action using FMEA to reduce the risk. And if we can convince management, if we do this effectively, we will get a lower cost of poor quality. As we mentioned earlier in this video, to do FMEA correctly takes management commitment in providing the relevant resources for a cross-functional team, but also to make the investments in any improvements in prevention or detection controls driven through the FMEA process. And then management need to compare, I've made that investment, what benefits am I going to get? Hopefully I'd get benefits in reduction in customer complaints, reduction in warranty concerns, and we would see reduction in the cost of poor quality. So let's take a look at any existing FMEAs that you have, because a question could be, do we have to go back and rework all of those existing FMEAs into the new AIAG VDA FMEA handbook format? So it's really important that the use of the new handbook and the timings to implement will be dictated based upon customer specific requirements. Triggers to use the new handbook may be based upon new designs, new technology or new processes. It may be because of a new application of an existing design or process, or it may be because we want to make engineering changes to an existing design or process. We mentioned earlier that there are two types of FMEA that are referenced in IETF 16949. A design FMEA, sometimes shortened to be DFMEA, and a process FMEA, sometimes shortened to be PFMEA. And what you can see in here is that if we're doing a design FMEA, we can do a design FMEA at a component level, at the subsystem level, or at the overall system level. And we can use tools like a block diagram, not just look at the individual components, 
but look at how individual components are joined together into a subsystem or a system. If we were developing a process FMEA, one of the key inputs is going to be a process flow diagram. In addition to the two types of FMEA, design FMEA focused on the product and the process FMEA focused on the manufacturing process, the new handbook introduced one more type of FMEA. And this is introduced as a supplement. And this is called FMEA Monitoring and System Response. This could be shortened to be FMEA-MSR. So this looks at potential failure causes which may occur under customer operating conditions that are analyzed with respect to their technical effects on the system, the vehicle, the people, or regulatory compliance. And it's important that this is a supplement to DFMEA and it's usually only applied where diagnostic detection is necessary to maintain safety or compliance. This can be used after completing a design FMEA on electrical, electronic or programmable electronic systems where the effects may be harmful to people or cause regulatory non-compliance. So how do we start developing an FMEA using the new AIG VDA handbook? What they recommend is that we start off with the five T's. So the first T is about intent. This is why are we doing the FMEA. The second T is about timing. When is the FMEA due by? This could be influenced maybe by customer timing. The third T is about team. Who do we need involved within the multidisciplinary team to create the FMEA? The fourth T is about task. What does the team need to do? And the fifth T is about what we tool are we going to use to conduct the analysis. So they're the five T's. Actually, I believe there is a sixth T, which is we need to engage management. So if we don't have senior management commitment to FMEA, maybe we're not going to achieve the desired results. So within the framework of IETF 16949, we see the need for a multidisciplinary approach. The exact words out of the standard, a multidisciplinary approach shall be used in the development and review of the product design and the manufacturing process risk analysis. Now the team that we comprise will depend on your specific organization, but a team would typically include people from design, manufacturing, engineering, quality, production, purchasing, maybe even involving the supplier, could involve maintenance and other appropriate functions. One of the key changes we have in the new AAG VDA handbook is a very clear seven step approach that is applicable whether we're creating a design FMEA or whether we're creating a process FMEA. And those seven steps, which you can see on the screen, are broken down into three distinct phases. System analysis, which is about planning, is about doing a structure analysis and a function analysis. This is an area that there is really a fundamental difference with existing approach to FMEA. And this requires more upfront investment in understanding the product, understanding the process step that we're going to evaluate, and doing a more functional work element analysis. That leads into failure analysis and risk mitigation, which includes failure analysis, risk analysis, and optimization. And then step seven is about communication of risk. This is about results documentation. 
So let's try and summarize the changes between other FMEA reference manuals, for example, AIG 4th edition and the new AIG VDA FMEA handbook. Hopefully you've already picked up there is far more focus upon making sure that FMEA is effective and efficient. That FMEA is driving improvement in the eyes of the customer and it's also driving internal reduction in the cost of non-quality. What we find, particularly for process FMEA, is there is need for a much deeper understanding of the manufacturing process. So this is when we develop our FMEA, we're not just going to go down to process step level, we're going to go down to work element level. And we really need to understand the 4M influence on each of the different work elements that go into a particular process step both for design FMEA and process FMEA, the manual is structured based upon a seven-step approach. We still use severity, occurrence and detection ranking, but the tables are significantly different from the fourth edition reference manual. So if we're going to go and develop an FMEA, we really do need to study these tables. One of the fundamental differences is the new handbook uses an action priority ranking. can be shortened to be an AP ranking. And it uses this rather than a risk priority number. The AP table accounts for all a thousand possible combinations between one and a thousand. So while we still score, severity, occurrence and detection on a 1 to 10 score, which could give a rating between 1 and 1000, we don't multiply severity times occurrence times detection. We look at a table that gives us an action priority ranking. This action priority ranking gives more emphasis about looking at severity first, then occurrence and then detection. So thank you for watching this introduction to both FMEA and the new AIG FMEA reference manual. And hopefully you picked up there are quite a number of changes when we compare it to the fourth edition of the AIG reference manual. If you are looking for a more detailed understanding of the seven steps, related to DFMEA or PFMEA, then I have produced a series of videos on the seven steps of DFMEA and the seven steps of PFMEA. If you're interested in this, if you visit the Quality Partner website, you will see a range of different purchase options. Watching these videos will give an alternative to sending many people on either external or internal face-to-face -face training. This can be a good way of increasing the knowledge within your organization.